Hare Krishna. Mother Bishak and my obeisances, please give me some blessings that I can say something that the devotees might benefit from. Thank you. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari
Bhattacharya. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Kahe said, Bhakti, devotional service. Sama, equal to Nahe, not Mukti, of liberation. Pala, the result. Bhagavat Bhakti, to the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vimukera, of one who is averse to. Hoya, it is Danda, the punishment. Kevala, only. So I'll read the previous verse again. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately pointed out in that verse the word is Mukti Pade, but you have changed it to Bhakti Pade. What is your intention? Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya replied, The awakening of pure love of Godhead, which is the result of devotional service, far surpasses liberation from material bondage. Those who are adverse to devotional service merging into the embrahman of fulgence is kind of punishment, is a kind of a punishment. Purport. In the Brahmanda Purana, it is said, Siddhaloka to Siddha loka tu tamasa parayata visantahi siddha brahma sukhya magne dayasa cha harini hataha. In siddha loka, which is brahma loka, there live two kinds of living entities. Those who are killed by the supreme personality of Godhead due to their having been demons in their previous lives, and those who are very fond of enjoying the impersonal effulgence of the Lord. The word tamasa means the coverings of the universe. Layers of material elements cover the universe, and outside these coverings is the impersonal Brahman effulgence. If one is destined to remain in the Lord's impersonal effulgence, he misses the opportunity to render service to the personality of Godhead. Therefore, devotees consider remaining in the impersonal Brahman effulgence a kind of punishment. Sometimes devotees think of merging into the Brahman effulgence and consequently they are promoted to Siddhaloka. Because of their impersonal understanding, they are actually punished. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya continues to explain the distinction between Mukti Pada and Bhakti Pada in the following verses. Om Agyan Timidandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gudavena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stop Ditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadati Swampadantika Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Divaranta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nir Sesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare In relationship to the topic there's another verse by uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati where he really heavily criticizes the uh, merging of the living entity into the impersonal Brahman effulgence he calls it births and death <laughs> and he also calls liberation or glorification of the principle of elevating to the heavenly planets is another kind of imagination although you find in the Shastras there are stages and steps and, and emphasis in places for achieving both the heavenly planets and liberation and there's a process and there are people who consider this to ultimately to be the actual goal or the success of spirituality 
But here we're seeing uh, that, uh, of course, Mahaprabhu is is uh, waiting to hear what Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya is trying to, you know, communicate by doing this. And ultimately we get a dis into a real nice discussion between what is bhakti and what is mukti. Mukti, of course, there are different types of mukti. And there are mukti which is, what we say, acceptable for Vaishnavas. And that's what Lewis going to the planet where Krishna is, having the same bodily features of Krishna, having the same opulence as Krishna, uh, being, uh, being in the association of Krishna directly. And then ultimately, I think here what is being mentioned and which is being, what we say, rejected is the Sahuja Mukti, or that which is merging into the bodily effulgence of the Lord. It mentions also that even the demons get such, you know, benefit. If one is a demon and somehow is killed by Krishna, they get that benefit. In other words, they get some temporary relief of material existence and some happiness that comes with that temporary relief, which is another form of illusion, because happiness that comes by relief of suffering is not really happiness. <clears throat> That's what material happiness is about. It's about getting relief from suffering. And liberation is the ultimate principle of that type of relief. But for a devotee, as Prabodhananda Saraswati says, it's worse than death. Why? Because even in the Nectar Devotion, in the very first chapter, it mentions that... Uh, if you multiply the happiness of mukti millions of times, it doesn't equal one, hap one drop of the happiness of bhakti. <laughs> bhakti is like an unlimited ocean of unlimited happiness. And it connects one with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, where mukti actually doesn't. <laughs> Even if you connect with Krishna as a demon, that's better than getting liberation and not having Krishna. Because <laughs> at least you get Krishna's association. So in this particular discussion, you'll see, one of the things that Lord Chaitanya is really pointing out, which is interesting, is why did you change the verse? You can't do that. These are verses in the Shastra, and they cannot be changed by us. But because of his ecstasy and his deep understanding after being purified by the association and by the instructions of Lord Chaitanya, he was a big Mayavadi, so big that he was recognized as the best of all the Mayavadis. And he, was, he had such reputation. And obviously there is some pleasure in that. But now... He's like completely rejected all of that. Why? Just a drop of bhakti is so powerful. Krishna Das Gaviraj Goswami in Chaitanya Charita Tamrita says, I'm standing on the ocean of the shore of love of God, which is the, the ocean of pure bhakti. I am trying to get one of those drops of that ocean and that ocean is so deep and so unlimited and so full of nectar that even one drop can drown one in love of God. Powerful. Bhakti is not different than Radharani. It is Radharani's energy manifested in the form of activities to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So in our execution of devotional service, we're actually trying to get to bhakti. <laughs> Mixed bhakti is not bhakti. It is, but it isn't. Why? Because, you know, if you have some sweet rice and someone says, you know, I like a little bit of salt in my sweet rice. You know, because, you know, why be traditional? You know, it'd be a little different. Try some salt. And if you try it, you think... I'll never do that again. <laughs> so bad. Now the point is that anything less than pure devotional service doesn't satisfy. 
the heart, the mind. So our goal is actually to come to Ananya Bhakti, that, that devotional service, which is our nature, pure devotional service. Ayabilasita sunya jnana kamara anukulena krishna silanam bhakti uttamam. Srila Rupa Goswami gives that verse in the very beginning, in the introduction of, uh, the, of nectar devotion, that this is pure devotional service. Free from any desire for gain by activities, no desire for gain through philosophical speculation on the, on the, on the scriptures. It has to be, the intention has to be for Krishna with a desire to please Krishna. Now, there are demons who please Krishna. Yeah. The demons actually please Krishna. Why? Because Krishna likes to fight. <laughs> and he doesn't fight with the devotees <laughs> because that's not, you know, it's, not, it's, he, it's more of a loving relationship. <laughs> and in that uh, fighting with the demons, they actually please Krishna because Prabhupada said he gets to flex his muscles, you know gets a chance to work out. He doesn't have to join the gym to do it. He just finds a demon and has some fun. That's Krishna. <laughs> and the demon benefits. So everything Krishna does, everyone benefits, even if it looks like something else. So that's Krishna. And But for a devotee, it has to be with the intention to please Krishna. If there's no intention to please Krishna, and it actually doesn't come to the standard of real devotional service. So in our execution of devotional, uh, Prabhupada was sitting on his uh, seat one day, and he was, maybe Mother Vishaka was there. This was a very important class Prabhupada was giving. And he said, you know, just become 100% Krishna conscious. Use that 100% Prabhupada say. And everyone in the audience, all the devotees were, you know, kind of like a sad silence. <laughs> no, no talking, but it looked like nobody wanted to really, you know, okay. And probably could see it, and he said, all right, 90%. <laughs> and then he was about to get up, that was the end of the class, and then he could see the devotees still didn't really go for that. So he said, all right, 80%. <laughs> Just become 80% Krishna God. In other words, if you get that kind of mercy, if the spiritual master says you can be 80% Krishna conscious, to Krishna that's 100%. <laughs> so whatever the guru uh, you know, authorizes, I mean Krishna is, ha goes along with his pure devotee. And then the devotees were still flinching a little. And so then he said, 70% and no less. And he got up. <laughs> He walked off the Vyasa so <laughs> He didn't want to go any lower. <laughs> but that probably could see, you know, that. To come to that stage is, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very rare. But that is bhakti, and that would satisfy the soul. Here, liberation is simply, is simply getting, you give real money to the teller in a store, and then you pay a little bit more than the actual merchandise, and the change is counterfeit money. <laughs> he gives you that back as far as part of your change. So this is what liberation is, because it doesn't really satisfy, and it's also temporary. It's actually considered to be, in one sense, material, because anything that doesn't direct oneself to loving service to the, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is, the below, is below standard of the soul's nature. Our, 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 our nature is to love Krishna purely and continuously. So to come to that stage is actually the, the goal of devotional service. And to how to come to that stage is the process of bhakti. And of course, coming to that stage means to follow the process. And what is the process? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Prabhupada said Krishna consciousness is so, he said, it's so simple, you'll miss it. 
And that wasn't some kind of like exaggeration or just kind of patronizing our, our false ego. He was actually saying, it's so simple, you'll miss it. So what did he mean? Chen Hare Krishna. <laughs> and associate with and serve the Vaishnavas. Because we have to associate with somebody, right? Association is the nature of the living entity's happiness. People who don't, who avoid association, they have to take association of something else. So no one can be without association. Even if they reject all forms of association, they associate with their mind, <laughs> which is another living entity. <laughs> according to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So these two things actually are the foundation for Krishna consciousness. Chant the holy name and associate, and then of course in the association we serve Vaishnavas. And here the discussions on the glories and activities of the Supreme Personality of God. Satam prasangam mamavirya sambido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata that this rasayana is so, it's rasayana, which means it's full of ras, it's sweet. It's kata because it's about Krishna. And it gives happiness to the heart and to the mind and to the ear also. So that is the essence of bhakti. Sometimes devotees say, well, you know, what's the essence of bhakti? That's is it. Hear and chant the glories of the Lord. That's it. Always. <laughs> As, as as it says in the uh, in Bhagavad Gita, was it Kirtan? Satam Kirtan Hare Krishna. <laughs> what is that verse in Bhagavad Gita? Satatam, yeah, thank you very much. Satatam kirtayantomam, yeah. Yatantas tatata vritaha, yatantas tatjamam bhaktya, nitya mukta upasate, yeah. And these are the activities of those who are actually understand the process, but they hear and chant the glories of the Lord. We have so many other things to do, right? We got to do this, and we got to do that. We got to do this, and this needs to be done. And if you don't do it, you know, something happens that shouldn't happen, or something doesn't happen that should have happened. And we got so many. But hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord really opens up the heart and attracts one to the lotus feet of the Lord. And what is the result? One wants to serve. One wants to serve naturally, spontaneously. It doesn't become something that is forced. Liberation is a kind of intoxication. It's kind of a compromise. And, but, but the principle of liberation is also acceptable because it is part of bhakti. In other words, Prabhupada used to say, if you're engaged in devotional service, you're on the liberated platform. There's no need to, in, to engage separately for liberation because it automatically comes. And Bilva Mangler Thakur, in his beautiful prayers, he says, Mukti, Mukti. Even we can add city. All of these things stand at the door with folded hands saying, how can I serve you? Man, bhakti is so powerful. One time Prabhupada wanted to indicate just how glorious bhakti was. So the devotees were praising Prabhupada and they said, Prabhupada, you're the best of all the devotees. Prabhupada said, devotee? Oh, devotee. That's very high. <laughs> very high. In other words, Prabhupada was showing to become a devotee is not something small. <laughs> it's actually really, to be a devotee means to be devoted <laughs> continuously. So that, so we get an indication from the great souls, what is the, the process here? So, the, mukti is just something that we, you know, we think, yeah, it's, it's nice, but it's not for, for us, because devotional service is, it is an ocean of unlimited happiness and unlimited knowledge. 
And so one engaged in devotional service, and as Prabhupada Mandir, it's a beautiful verse, Kaivalya, Manadaka Sedam, where he also says, Pushpayate, he talks about the heavenly planets as being as flowers in the sky. He calls, you know, like liberation just worse than death. <laughs> He's tasting. I mean, Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati is so deep in bhakti that if he hears the glories of any of the manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he becomes unhappy. Now, you think about that one. Because all he wants to hear is about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's all. That's all. He doesn't know anything else. Now, that, now Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is, you know, he is Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha, Krishna, Nahiyanya is Radha and Radhi and Krishna both in one manifestation. So he's not an avatar. He's avatar. He's the source of all avatars. He is Krishna. The absolute truth is actually one. But it separates in order for Ras, for pastimes, so they become Radha and Krishna. But that same absolute truth, again, manifests itself in the oneness of itself in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So well, those who worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they're just they're on the highest platform. We like Krishna; he's okay. <laughs> but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you can't get any more merciful than that. Even if you don't have any good qualities, he looks for good qualities in you and fans that spark. Look what he did to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. Gopinath Acharya, the nephew of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, was criticizing his uncle. You know, he said, you are just a, you don't know anything. <laughs> you're standing next to the Supreme Personality of God and you're trying to instruct him. <laughs> what a fool you are. <laughs> but Lord Chaitanya was really kind to him. You know, he's like my father. He's, he wants to take care of me. He wants to instruct me. <laughs> and so he listened. He listened for seven days. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya is talking about the glories of, you know, attaining liberation. The oneness of it all. And then for seven days after listening to it, and Lord Chaitanya didn't say a word. He accepted him as senior. He was elderly. He was respectable. And he just listened. And after seven days, Sarvabhoma said, you know, I'm speaking, and I can see you're listening. Don't you have any questions? <laughs> Nothing? Say something. And Lord Chaitanya said, well, the sun is very bright and very, you know, illuminating. And when it appears, it appears in the sky and everything becomes bright. But your interpretation of Vedanta Sutra is like the clouds covering the sun. <laughs> and then Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was shocked. He didn't expect that. <laughs> and then he, he, he was a little bit taken aback and he said, all right, let me hear your explanation. You think you know better? Because, you know, he was elderly and Lord Chaitanya was just, you know, half his age. <laughs> And then Lord Chaitanya just explained everything. And then after that, he had nothing to say. <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, because we actually, you know, because the essence or the mostly those who are engaged in and practice, the goal of the a goal of devotional or a goal of spiritual activities is to merge into the our mayavadis. They're mayavadis. Mayavadi means one who thinks that all living entities are God. I was listening to Prabhupada talk yesterday. He was saying, and he was actually, you know, Prabhupada is interesting. Sometimes he just smashes it, just tears it apart, and there's nothing left. This time he was saying, well, you know, you're saying that the living entity is God, and that's okay, because we are. <laughs> but he was saying, we're God-like, and therefore, if you say you're God-like, in the same sense, you're God. But we know a better God. His name is Krishna. <laughs> so we'll take that one, and you can have this other one. And he's also God. 
So you're a little God, but we're a big, we like the real God. <laughs> so Prabhupada becomes very concessionary in some of his discussions where he, and it was one time Prabhupada was saying, we, you're Krishna, I'm Krishna, we're all Krishna. That's all. He kept saying that over and over again. And then the devotees were thinking, what happened? What is he doing? <laughs> And then Prabhupada could understand, and then he said, well, you know, there, the absolute truth is a chinti beta beta tattva. It's one and simultaneously. So Prabhupada was emphasizing the oneness, that all living entities have the same quality as the Lord. And so we can give credit to the living entity in that sense because we are God-like, but not the absolute principle of, of the source of all living entities. Shri Shri Radha Gokulananda Ki Jai. If I sound like I'm tired, it's because I really am. <laughs> the last week has been, I, I never had so many programs in one week. And I also found out that my I was in a debilitated astrological stage while I was doing it. So just in case this, this class is putting you to sleep, I, I apologize. <laughs> anyway, just to give you a default principle to work with. Nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitananam eko bahuna viradati kama so. The living entity has is also nityo and nityanam is actually practically the same word. There is one nityo and then there is many. That's us. We are the many and there's one. But that one is eko bahunam vidadati kama. He maintains the rest of all living entities. We can't even maintain ourselves. <laughs> That's our problem. So therefore understanding that relationship you come to the platform of understanding that there's only one thing to do and that's serve that's all there's no other alternative to merge to try to be you know all of these are ultimately uh, completely opposite of our nature although there is some gain in those areas but that gain is simply is, temporary and then it, it's lost in due course of time so we don't really accept and you'll, it'll go on and Lursabra Bhoma Bhattacharya will explain why he changes the verse and I wanted to make another point because you know that's my nature is to criticize so anyway <laughs> is that uh, this principle of not changing verses sometimes we do that and we don't even know we do it. I was discussing with one very senior devotee from America. His name was Dravida Prabhu. We all know Dravida. He's very scholarly. Yeah, he's with the BBT and he does so much scholarly work on Prabhupada's books. So I said, well, you know, what is this? Vrindayai Tulsi Devai Kriya Priyayai Kesavastacha Krishna Bhakti Paridevi Satchavatai Namahonu. We were always taught Vishnu Bhakti, and now devotees are saying Krishna Bhakti. So what is it? He said, actually, this is what he told me, that Prabhupada had said that, that uh, it's Vishnu Bhakti, but Tulsi is Krishna Bhakti. She is, obviously. And if you compare it, she's more Krishna Bhakti than Vishnu Bhakti. I mean, that's a logical, philosophical. If I'm wrong, just let me know. <laughs> so, but we say, sometimes we say Krishna Bhakti. So I asked him and he said, yeah, that came up when Prabhupada was here. And Prabhupada said, yeah, but you can't change the verses in the Shastra. And that's what Lord Chaitanya is also saying. It says Mukti Pade, but you're saying Bhakti Pade. <laughs> because that the verse is actually... Mukti Pade. No, yeah, that's the point. So uh, that's the only thing I have come across with devotees. We somehow or other say Krishna Bhakti. But as far as I know, and from what I had heard, it's Vishnu Bhakti. It's the actual written in the Shastras. 
So though it appears to be less than Krishna Bhakti, it is actually what we should accept. Can change the Shastras. <laughs> There's a reason behind that. So obviously, what is the reason? I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, so is there any comments, questions, or corrections? Yes, Prabhu. Antaranga? Hare Krishna. Thank you, Marsh, for the, for the very nice class. Really a sleepy class. Mm-hmm. My question is, how can we reconcile that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave such a mercy to, to a Mayavadi, uh. yet our, our acharyas in our sampradaya are, you know, headed by like Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, Bhakti Vinotakur, and Srila Prabhupada, they're very much like cutting the Mayavad philosophy. Yet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu shows such a mercy that he actually changed the Mayavadi's heart into, into a Bhakta. Yeah. So how can we take that as a point that, how can we take this kind of a mood and meditation rather than destroying the Mayavad philosophy, changing the Mayavad philosophy to bhakti understanding? How should we do that when we face that similar situation? Well, generally, if you're reaching, if you're actually coming across a philosophical mind body, generally you stay away from that. <laughs> Because it says just to hear that philosophy is, you know, Krishna, Lord Chaitanya says, Mayavari Krishna Parade, that they're actually great offenders to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we avoid that. But if someone is not, you know, actually adopting that philosophy but have, has Mayavari tendencies, then I think it's our duty to somehow point out that there is a better understanding of the absolute truth which is more correct. And it's easy. The easy point is that person comes from person. The absolute truth is the supreme personality of God. The Mayavadis accept person or the impersonals accept person as a manifestation of the impersonal. So they say that when the unlimited supreme absolute truth wants to appear in this world assumes assumes a material form so but they say that is simply material and is coming from a higher source which is impersonal we say no and that comes up in this discussion that the absolute truth is is a person and his energy is impersonal because personal and impersonal are two sides of the absolute truth. They're both important, but the source of the impersonal is personal and not vice versa. And you can, that's, that's a logical argument because we are persons and we are coming from the Supreme. So how can we be more than the Supreme? And that Prabhupada said, how can, it, how can person be created from in-person? But the Maya bodies have their arguments for everything. Mm-hmm. That's why we call their philosophy. We don't call it philosophy, we call it philosophy. Mm-hmm. Because they try to fool everybody, and, and they're also fooled. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the basic, simple, more or most uh, acceptable argument is to try to explain that from person comes person. Of course, their argument is that the all-pervading is more appropriate to the absolute truth because the absolute truth is everywhere where person is localized. But they have, that's the material understanding of personality. It's Krishna's personality, although he is a person, it is still, it contains all aspects of the absolute truth, including the impersonal also. This is where, you know, they use that argument. Personal is limited and impersonal is unlimited. But when it comes to the Krishna, his, his personality is also unlimited. He can appear, appear in so many different places in his personality. 
he can manifest himself in unlimited forms of himself and be the same one personality. And that is achintya. Achintya means that which is not logically argumentable. You can't really come to that stage by argument. It's accepted. It's simply accepted that that's the, the part of the nature of the absolute truth. It becomes chintya, it becomes conceivable when you become God-realized. But, uh, but trying to explain that before you reach that stage, it, it remains a chintya, inconceivable. Hmm. That make sense? Okay. Okay, any other questions? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mic's on the way. Thank you, Maharaj, for the wonderful course. I, I just so wanted to ask um, something a little technical. Um, mm -hmm. In the beginning of the verse, uh, the purport, Prabhupada says that in Siddhaloka, Siddhaloka. Yeah, um, merge a demons or a demons yeah. who are killed by Krishna or people who want to uh, yeah. get liberation. So my question is, is Siddhaloka the same as Brahma Jyoti? Um, it's interesting because probably it's mentioned here that it says in Siddhaloka and then the next word is Brahma Loka. Now uh, we know Brahma Loka as Satya Loka and not Siddha Loka. So it sounds like Siddha Loka is just another realm of the higher realms. But here it's given, you know, an, a, as an analogous word for Brahma Loka. He said, in Siddha Loka, Brahma Loka, there are two types of living entities. Those who are killed by the Supreme Lord and those and they were demons in previous lows. And those who are fond of enjoying the impersonal effulgence of the Lord. So, so is that the same like Brahma Jyoti, Siddha Loka? That, that is confusing me. Any pundits out there? Oh, yes, okay. Yeah. Kartik, thank you for being here. Can you answer that question? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't see you earlier. Well, Siddha Loka is the same as uh, the Vaikuntha Loka in the top sphere right beyond Brahma Loka. Mm -hmm. And that is mentioned in the fifth canto commentaries that Siddha Loka is another name of the Brahman effulgence. The Brahman effulgence, where the Brahman effulgence begins, that's where the Siddha Loka is. It's simply a term. That's, it's simply a term, yeah. It's, it's different from the Siddha Loka which is there in the Antariksha, which is... Heavenly realm. Which is heavenly, yeah, which is before this, you know, below the Swarga Loka. Mm -hmm. That's a different Siddha Loka. But that is where the Apsaras, the Vidyadharas... Right, in the Siddhas. In the Siddhas, yes. So th that's different to this Siddha Loka, which is as good as Vaikuntha, but not Vaikuntha, mm -hmm. because it's the beginning of the Brahma Jyoti. So, so your, the answer to your question is yes, the Siddha Loka and the Brahman effulgence are the same. Yeah. But there are two different Yeah, there is two Siddha Lokas, but it's, it's not indicated here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Prabhu. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your nice class. Um, it's interesting, the question of Krishna Bhakti and Vishnu Bhakti came up in yesterday's class, so Prayojana Prabhu... He said the same thing? He said, um, as a Shikshamrita letter, he's, he, he found where, Krish, where Prabhupada uses Krishna Bhakti. So he came downstairs just now, because I, I checked on the folio and I couldn't find it, and so I, he came down this morning and he showed it to me, and I've got a photograph of it. I don't, I don't know the full letter, but it says, I am I'm given here with three mantras for Tulsi Devi as follows. And then Vrindaya Tulsi Devi, I pray, Yankee Shavasha, Krishna Bhakti Prati Devi. Welcome to Iskand. There's too many brothers. It actually points out, you, you've given another, another anecdote where Prabhupada said, keep it as Vishnu Bhakti. So it's been interesting. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for uh, 
making it even more unclear. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to argue that point. <laughs> well, anyway, Krishna knows what you mean, so that's, that's what counts, really. Yeah. It's the bhakti. Yes. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for the class. There was a, a point about uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You, you were saying in the middle of the class about how the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were saying, Krishna's okay. But we, Prabhupada and Saraswati was thinking, just let me hear about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, he, he rejects hearing, not rejects, he just not, he's not interested in any of the other manifestations of the Godhead. He's, he only wants to hear and glorify and serve Lord Chaitanya. He had, he had Lord Chaitanya's personal associations, huh? Mm -hmm. So in that, is, that, is, that, um, is that a different mood from what we're doing? Because no, we're... because Lord Chaitanya represents Sri Vrindavan Dham. Said he's Radha and Krishna is one. Yeah. Now, when sometimes you see on the altar, you'll see Radha and Krishna, and then you'll see a deity of Lord Chaitanya right next to Krishna. You don't see the Ananda, you just see. Just to show that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna are non different. <laughs> mm. But there is an element of Adarya. The Adarya mood is there in. Lord Chaitanya. Nandaya means mercy, extra mercy. So he gives extra mercy. So when we approach the absolute truth, through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we're actually approaching it in the way that it is authorized by the Shastras, and there is more mercy available. If we try to go to Radha and Krishna without Mahaprabhu, we will find it very difficult, practically impossible. Mm -hmm. Impossible. So we can we can say uh, we want to please Krishna and we want to please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Both would be non-different saying that. If you please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it's n no different. No. What pleases Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. And what is the Maha Mantra? It's Radha Krishna. <laughs> That's what it is. He's glorifying Radha and Krishna. Now, you might say, well, there's Ram in there. So, we get glorifying Ramachandra. That mood is acceptable, but for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, it's only Radha Krishna. So, they understand Hari Rama is Ramana which is Krishna is Radhika Raman. Mm. So that's their mood, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. The whole mantra is simply Radha and Krishna. Mm. And for those of you who are an Aishwarya Bhav, you can <laughs> go for, you know, Lord Ram. <laughs> He's there. Yeah. Yes. Is, you know, 
she's home and she's preparing the evening meal for the husband to come home and she's thinking, you know, I'm going to make something I like today. <laughs> and so he comes home and she offers it and he likes it. But her intention was to make something she liked. <laughs> but somehow he got some benefit from it. <laughs> she makes something that he likes with intention to please him there's more love there the love is there or the the affection the desire to please which is the mood of love it may not be there when when we perform the activity although it pleases krishna that affectionate mood is not part of the activity thank you mm -hmm. yes okay thank you